Welcome to Screen Chat. My name is Marcella Toro. Screen Chat chats to professionals who work in film and television who share their experiences and wisdom. Today, my special guest is Carlos Gomez, who's had a remarkable career working as an actor for more than 30 years. Carlos is currently co-starring in the new hit family rom-com series, The Baker and the Beauty, which has had rave reviews available to watch a new episode every Tuesday at 5 p.m. on Stan in Australia and in the US. The show is also available on the ABC in the US every Monday. Carlos is known for starring in the NBC drama series Law and Order True Crime, The Mendez Murders, as Jose Mendez. Carlos also starred on the A&E Network's hit show, The Glades, as Carlos Sanchez. Carlos, welcome. Thank you so much for being with me and I really appreciate your time. Thank so, you for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Now I understand that um, that this has been, you know, such a whirlwind for you, and it's such an amazing ride um, because mm -hmm. you have have such an array of credits, and it's 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 incredible. And now you're on the Baker and the Beauty. How does that feel for you? You know, it it feels great to. I mean, finally get to being Latin because I'm a I'm Cuban descent, yes. but um, being part of a, a family that happens to be Latin could be any family, but this one happens to be Latin, happens to be Cuban, mm. and um, you know it's a, it's an all Latin cast. It's a great rom com. It's just great to be a part of a, a great ensemble story. It's a positive uh, positive images, and I think it's right now what we need as a society to kind of unplug of, from the reality we're going through. But I've been doing this for 30 years, and this is by far my, my favorite part that I've played so far. The role that you're playing, Rafael mm -hmm. Garcia, the owner of Rafael's Bakery, uh, mm -hmm. can you really bake? <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't bake and I can't even fry an egg. But <laughs> when we got to Puerto Rico, which was where we filmed the series, we took an intense week course, six hours a day, on how to make the pastries that we make in the show. So yeah. everything that we're making there live, we know how to make. We know how to make Cuban bread. We know how to make desserts. We know how to bake a cake. Um, so when you see us doing it with our hands, we're actually doing that. So that was one of the caveats that, you know, we got to learn how to how to bake for, for real. So it would look authentic on screen. That's fantastic. What would you give yourself out of 10? <laughs> so that means but, uh, for appearance a 10 but for actual uh yeah no it, it, it's I'm, I'm okay i'm not great but i'm okay yes would you say that you and Raphael share the same family values we do actually um i'm i'm, I'm based this character really on my father because my dad was a first um, you know Im immigrant to this country and he worked very hard blue collar you know, uh, trying to give me a better, better life. So I could relate to a lot of, of this father mm. figure. And also he's a compassionate person. He's mm. not like a stereotypical dad. You know, he, he really feels for his kids a lot. And, you know, he's trying to do the best that he can, but also try to um, give them a piece of their culture and, and their values that he's grown up with. And, and that's always hard because kids have their own mind on what they want to do and how they want to do it. So it's a struggle of every parent. Yes, yes. Would you say, well, he loves to dance. He loves to have a bit yes. of fun. <laughs> Would yes, you say does. that you're similar in real life? Yeah, very similar, it's, and including my wife, who's uh, Lisa Bedell, who's a fantastic actress. We both are like, you know, we're from New York. We love to dance. We're Caribbean. You know, so even when we shop, every night, you know, when we shot on Friday nights, we would go have dinner with the whole cast, every single one of us, and then we we would end up dancing salsa in some club in Puerto Rico. That was like our weekly weekend occurrence. So I love to dance. Uh, I used to be a dancer when I was younger, but I love to salsa dance. Um, so a lot of what you see on film is really us being silly and having fun and loving each other. As an audience, you know, people want to see something that's refreshing, something mm. that's kind of different, going back to basics, going back to family values, you know, romantic comedy, fantasy. And that's what our show is about. It's really about just disconnecting from reality for a little bit. And, uh, uh, and you fall in love with this family and you fall in love with 
with Noah Hamilton, played by Nat Kelly, who's fantastic. Oh, she's gorgeous. She's Amazing. Great, great actress. And I think she's from Australia as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, um, I heard that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she, you know, and she loves to go salsa dancing, too. So it was like <laughs> everybody was into the whole dancing. And we were in Puerto Rico. We shot on the island of Puerto Rico. Wow. That is in, infused with music and yes. food and culture. And, you know, we kind of like just fed into that whole whole lifestyle. Amazing. So how yeah. long were you there for? We, we shot nine episodes and we were there for five months. We lived there for five months. I'm just really interested about the process. Those periods of times that you didn't have work. How did you survive with those periods of not working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, after I had been in New York, I had done theater, I had done Broadway. And then when I moved to Los Angeles, at the time when I was acting, those credits really didn't matter. So I had to get a regular job. I used to lay tiles. I did construction for four years wow. while I was transitioning from being a dancer to being an actor. Because they didn't want to know if you were a dancer, then you were just a dancer. They didn't want to see you act. They didn't think you could act. That's when I was starting. So, you know, it took me a while to just kind of start from scratch, get a construction job, get into acting classes, and then kind of restarting and reimagining my career again. Um, and then I started working. I did ER, which was a pretty popular series back in the day. Yes. But, you know, it was it was never steady. There was always downtimes. And mm. during those downtimes, uh, I think the most important thing for actors is to keep creative. You know, um, try to do readings, read plays. You know, you can always keep your artistry going, going to museums, watching art, watching good movies, dissecting movies, writing stuff down. I think, you know, if you sit by your house and wait for the phone to ring or for a producer to call you, you, know, you can go crazy because you have yes. to, you got to fall in love with rejection. You got to make that like a, a shield to empower you um, and, and just keep at it. You know, I never had a plan B. You know, I didn't say, well, if I can't do this, then I'll do this. This was it. This is all I can do. And I was going to either make it or break it. So I think you just perseverance working i wasn't very picky of what i did I, I would do a commercial i would do a guest star i would do a co-star i do one scene in a movie but i always learned mm. even though if i was a little part in a big movie yes. i would come on my days off and see the other actors work and learn from that so and 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 being humble and being mm. humble and knowing that it's not just talent it's talent and a lot of luck and being at the right place at the right time but do you think because it's called show business and you've got to show, you got to show up. And then there's business. So did you have the insights of the business? Not when I started, um, mm. not when I started. And that is something that now, I think now with the internet, that actors can be a little bit more prepared when it comes to the business side of the business yes. and understand why roles go to one actor and don't go to the other actor. And, you know, um, and you gotta, you gotta, you got to carry your career as a business because we are a business. We're an entity. We're a brand. When they hire you, they hire you. They hire your brand. They hire your acting. I think it's important to to sometimes have either a good agent or an agent and a manager because an agent, you know, they can get you the jobs. They can give you the appointments, but you're making the decision how you want your career to go. You know, there was a time where, you know, being Latin, my, it was very stereotypical. I was playing every gang member, every cartel leader. And then I went through a period where I said, you know what, I don't want to, I don't want to play these parts anymore. I'm playing the same part in different TV shows. And I was like, um, this is not artistic. It's not fulfilling. Those jobs that you get when, like for this part playing Raphael, this part kind of came to me. You know, I didn't go get it. This came to me. And, mm. you know, now I had the opportunity to really, to really flourish in it and use 30 years of talent that I've had and put it all into this one part that I knew that I could do well. So, you know, it's also part meeting preparation. It's a very hard career. Mm. You know, don't do it unless it, you have a passion. It's your calling. Yes. It's something that you'd have no idea what else you would want to do. And, and you do it for free. Just upon reflection, what would you have done differently? I wouldn't have stressed out so much about mm. not getting jobs. Uh, you know, I think every actor is very hard on themselves when, you know, when you get a rejection, you always take it personally. You know, you go like, oh, my God, I'm not good, I'm too yeah. fat, or I don't look good, or I'm too Latin, <laughs> or I have an accent, or, you know. And 85% yeah. of the time, it has nothing to do with you. So I think, you know, not being so hard on myself when I didn't get jobs mm. and just focus on the next job. 
You know, mm-hmm. okay, this is, you get an audition, you go in there, you do the best audition you can. I started doing like 10 years ago at the, at the casting director's office, I would crumple my, my sides and I would throw it in their trash can. So as soon as I walked out that door, that audition was gone. I didn't, I didn't have any kind of, I didn't keep anything from that audition. Mm. And that kind of gave me a sense of fleshing away and moving on to the next thing. You know? How do you prepare for a role when you go into the room? You know, it's funny. Um, I like to, 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 some people, go, you know, they don't like to go in as the part. I like to go in as the part. I like to wear the clothes that this character would wear. I'm mm-hmm. always off book, always off mm-hmm. book. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've done a lot of research. I've done a lot of work on the lines. I, I kind of have a feeling of who this character is when I go into the audition. Yes. Um, so, and then, you know, with as much confidence as I can, I'll go in, I'll do my audition. I ask him, is there anything else you want to see? And that's it. That's pretty much the preparation, you know. But I, but I think, mm-hmm. you know, some people go in with their lines half learned or, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I think you have to be confident. Mm-hmm. You have to walk in that office and know that them as casting directors, they're on your side. Yes. Because they want to hire you. A lot of times we as people, we think, oh, the casting director, I'm so nervous and she doesn't like me. She's never hired me. And it's not the case. They want to hire you. Because Absolutely. once they hire your part, they're off to hire the other parts they need. So when you walk in that room, they want you to be that part. They want mm. you to get the job. Mm. And, you know, a lot of the times I didn't think that. I always thought, like, oh, it's me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, you know, it's um, it's really having confidence and, and being prepared and knowing that you mm. did the best you could without audition. And um, that's it. You're yes. out the door. And that's you a know? really, really good point because the casting director calls you in because they believe in you. Exactly. So and and a lot of people don't know that they think oh you know my agent just put me forward for this, right? They don't exactly. realize that or, they go through so many people and they have to select and they have to narrow right. down. Right, and also you know you might go to a casting director three or four times, and you go like oh, I, I've she never hires me. Yeah, you know, and you go with this negativity, and they bring you back because they want to hire you and they like what you've done in the past auditions, and they just keep pushing you until the director clicks with the with the part that is for you. That's right. So never complain about a no. casting director calling you five times and not hiring you. That's right. You know, thank them for bringing you in on the audition. You know? Exactly. Because it's not yeah. them choosing you. It's actually the director yeah. and producer. It's people in the room who are actually making totally. those decisions. Yeah. Yeah. You have to become, you have to, you know, have good relationship with casting directors because that they're the ones who, who are cheering for you, you know? Yes. And you do that by being prepared, by going in there, doing a good job, making them look good to directors. Because, you know, sometimes if you don't go prepared or you got the audition late, or you think, ah, I'm just going to go in there and read. And her her job is on the line because she says, why would you bring me this actor that's not prepared, doesn't know his lines, mm. he came late. You know, I don't want to hire him in my job. No. So it makes the casting director look bad. So if you're not really 100% committed to doing this role, and going in there prepared, don't waste your time or their time. Absolutely. You know? Now, you're in Australia, right? Yes, that's right, from Melbourne. In Melbourne. Oh, I love Melbourne. I love Melbourne. So we met for the first time in 2001, which was a long time wow. ago. Wow, oh, was 2001? I played that's a Mexican right. girl, and you played a Mexican? That's right. I played Joaquin Cortez, this Mexican. Um, <laughs> he was like a liberator or something. And I remember it was rainy. I loved it. We shot in Dalesford, right? Dalesford yes. is called? That's yeah. right, Dalesford. Very good memory. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That was one of the best experiences, just traveling to – I'd never been to Australia, traveling there, staying in Melbourne, loving yeah. Melbourne, and then we'd, we'd drive up to uh, Dalesford to uh, to do the show. I had yes. a great time while I was there. That's so good. Well, it was such a pleasure to have you here today and see you again here. talk to you again. Um, yes. Wow. Yes. And hopefully... Congratulations on the show, too. Oh, thank you. No, congratulations yeah, yeah, yeah. to you. That's great. <laughs> yeah, and anytime you know, if you come back for a second season, too, I'd love to come back and talk to you guys about, you know, the second season and stuff, too. So That would be wonderful. Thank you so yeah. much. Great. All right, thank you, so Marcella. My right. pleasure. You take care. Yeah. We're going to come out with The Baker and the Beauty. So just bear with me. See you, Carlos. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. 
First up, the news breaking the internet today. Reports are Noah Hamilton, the model turned fashion mogul, and Colin Davis have broken up. Oh my God. This. You have the keys to the truck? Better go. We're taking Vanessa out for our anniversary. Mm. Fourth anniversary. Ask him where she's making him go. Vanessa Princesa. It's the most expensive place in Miami. A dinner there is like a weekend in the Bahamas, right? A woman like Vanessa? Pretty soon she's gonna give you an ultimatum. She's expecting a proposal soon, right? You're getting married? I'm not getting married. Did you look at the house I sent you? <laughs> Think about it. Place of our own. It's even got room for a nursery. Yeah. <coughs> May I please have everyone's attention? Vanessa, what are you doing? Daniel, will you marry me? Oh. Daniel. Daniel! Need a ride? Come on, in 10 seconds, TMZ is gonna be all over us. So what do you say? In or out? Bro, where are you? You're not gonna believe this. Have you spoken to Daniel? I have reason to believe that Daniel is out with Noah Hamilton. Oh my God, he's right. I views me. Tell me everything and don't skip even a microsecond. Well, we met at the restaurant. <sighs> what? I came home to a very long line at the bakery. Did you check? I checked it. Twice. I guess we have you to thank for that. One of the upsides of being a celebrity. And there's the downside. Women like her are nothing but trouble. She's not really like that. When I'm with her, she's just like herself. I think there's a connection, but I don't know. Maybe she has that effect on everybody. Hi, who cares what she is as long as she keeps bringing in the crowds like this? What about you, Daniel? What do you want more than anything in the whole world? I want what my parents have. It's magic, the two of them. They make each other better. If you really believe that that's out there, then you shouldn't settle for anything less. Go find it. She's the baker and she's the beauty.